Welcome back to the GA Fan TV podcast. My name is Aaron. I'm delighted to be joined here by our Matt and Silverbridge footballer, Jarley O'Burns. Just a reminder, we're brought to you by Declan Kirby, GA star, best children's GA book out there in the market at the minute. So you can you can find it on Eason's, Amazon, all good bookshops. So make sure to check it out when you get a chance. Jarley O'Burns, how's things? All good. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. All good. No, no bother at all. I suppose you're enjoying the... Uh, the downtime, I suppose, obviously now, obviously, unfortunately, that Silverbridge were knocked out of the, the Armagh Senior Football Championship, but I suppose at the same time, probably does give you a bit of a, a break from it all. Yeah, yeah, you sort of try and look at the, the positive side of things all the time, and so it's it does give you a bit of a, a bit of a break now before you sort of enter back into that county bubble, so it's, um, fuck yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it easy now for, for a lot of weeks and then ramp it back up again when... Uh, Whenever we get get started again with Armagh, so it's nice to nice to get a break too, I suppose. Yeah, because I, I suppose obviously with the the split season that they've introduced, like it's kind of a it's a hectic yeah. enough schedule. Like at the best of times, like obviously for yeah. for most inter county players and then obviously club players as well. Like I mean, like how have you kind of found the I suppose the the introduction of the split season? I know we're kind of only sort of at the beginning of it and sort of implementing it now, but how have you found it? I feel it's probably been a, a success. Um, I know, I know, I didn't get, I didn't get over the states, but it it gave sort of boys maybe an opportunity to go over and then experience that. Maybe in other years where they couldn't, um, and then again, it's maybe given players who maybe could would be further on the championship an opportunity to still get a holiday with family or whatever, or with other halves and different things like that. There, so I can only sort of see it as a positive if if you get that sort of out of it and. The more condensed season too there maybe isn't uh, the fact there's no sort of break between the league and the championship I think only can be a good thing as well so you're not leaving a big gap there so I think so far it's been, it's been pretty positive yeah yeah because I suppose like there was, there was always huge gaps in between games as well like you even think back to previous all Ireland finals and replays so like I'd imagine yeah. as a like as a fan point of view it's definitely better anyways I think like having the games a lot a lot quicker. I know it's weird, probably not having your your all Ireland finals in in September or having your yeah. all Ireland semi finals in August. But yeah. like at the same time, like having having the games, I suppose, a lot quicker, and then it gives a lot more attention to the club championships mm-hmm. as well. Like I suppose, absolutely, yeah. Like it gives sort of maybe club players an opportunity to play in you know RTE or TG Gahar. I know boys from my club that their first opportunity to me to play on a national stage, you know, it was all new to them and sort of maybe that's sort of extra bit of buzz too for them. So it was, again, I thought it was all good in, in, in terms of that. Like, that's, uh... Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I suppose going back to, going back to the start, obviously for, for yourself, mm-hmm. obviously growing up in Armagh, growing up in, in Silverbridge, I suppose, what was it, what was it like growing up there anyways? And I suppose what your, your first early memories of, of Gaelic games? Uh, yeah, I suppose similar to, to, to most people, you sort of, you, you go around with a bit ball all the time and you're just sort of kicking around and maybe with your father playing and stuff too for the club, <clears throat> you're around that bit more often maybe than other than others, uh, or, you know, tagging along to training sessions and different things like that there, sort of the senior men maybe know you a bit better and sort of would then watch you, you know, the way up, but uh, we were sort of lucky with the club to have that was sort of a, a decent team. Then me, a couple of years ahead of me, was a, a very good team, and we were sort of successful uh, underage. And um, yeah, we're sort of trying to bring that on a bit now in terms of senior level. But it's it's tougher to do maybe than we first we first thought. But like I'd say, we've we've great facilities down in our place. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but we've, we've three good pitches, and two of them are floodlit, and you know they'll be full every night. There's a full hall and stuff and a wee bar and stuff so we've you know our facilities are second to none and uh, a, a park now being built into it as well so it's we've real good community down there at the club like so it's uh i do i do enjoy it. i'll probably go down we've reminded match now tonight i might just go down just to watch it just to see friends and stuff too for for a coffee or whatever or a walk around the club so it's it's football is a big part of it too but there's other things in our club that's we you know we cherish as well so that's it's all part of it like yeah, like I suppose club football has always been very, very strong in Armagh. Like when you think back to 
Cross McGlenn Rangers, obviously, and you know, plenty. Of, you know, we've seen Mahari win a, a, a club title a couple of years ago. Clan Aaron been building up as well. So, like, it does seem in our mind like the, there is a real sort of togetherness a lot of the time with some of the clubs, mm-hmm. which you do get here in Dublin sometimes. But I do think in in counties like our man Mayo, like you really do play for your area. Whereas in Dublin, it probably is a bit more scattered, but definitely seems to be fairly together anyway in in Silverbridge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like especially suppose all, even nearby clubs are so close and there's a lot of clubs in Armagh for being such a small sort of county uh, and it's sort of you know whoever wins the club championship sort of everyone gets behind them then and the Ulster campaign and whatever maybe go on to all Ireland so it's it is quite close-knit everyone everyone knows each other you know if you're working in a school or there's people from all around um, it's it's good that way. It, I suppose Dublin it could be different, or other counties maybe with a bigger area and stuff. You mightn't maybe bump into boys. You, you usually uh, would bump into, but we would see boys all the time um, in the shops mm. or whatever. It's sort of very very close knit, and maybe the areas wouldn't be as big as in other counties. But you know, <laughs> just in South Armagh in general, really, all there's really to do is the farm or play football. You saw you do one or the other, so uh, that's why maybe you get. You get some good teams there, but it is just good to push the thing on. Yeah, like, did you have any idols growing up? I'd imagine probably a few from the, the 2002 team. Yeah, yeah, just same as that. You probably, you know, you Paul McGrain in midfield, you always would have looked up to. That was sort of the position you looked at. And then you have your forwards, Stephen McDonald and Dashi McConville and then Bays and Ronan Clark. You, you could have picked anyone, really, in, on the team and even sort of growing up I know they didn't win win all Ireland after that but they sort of dominated Ulster as well uh, for a period of time them enthroned in the noughties you know and you would have looked at you know Kieran McKeever and that and obviously Kieran McGinney and that team and the defence and stuff and uh, or Andy Mallon just a lot of different players that you could sort of try and maybe pick wee bits and pieces from or model your game after so you know, there was no shortage of, of good players back then sort of as, as we were growing up um, the crop of players uh, had, had great sort of idols to look at and you could even in every position they did good players you know and, and them naughties that naughties period so uh, there was no shortage of, of role models definitely you know. yeah because I suppose 2002 was such a, a big thing in Armagh as well obviously when you broke the duck and, and won that all Ireland like and mm-hmm. I mean I remember like I, I was fairly young myself obviously watching the game yeah. like I kind of seen about it and all the rest but what were your kind of first I suppose memories of of that, or, or what were your memories of that? Like obviously, a huge moment for our man. Obviously, hasn't happened since. So, do you know, yeah. like the celebrations and and obviously the image as well in Crow Park of all the the orange flags and everything else. I think it's a fairly yeah. iconic image, like in the GA. You know. Yeah, no, it, especially it being the first ever of any you know any county that wins something like that for the first time ever. It's always going to be huge. And I was only four or five at the time. I don't even think it was at us. Uh, I can't remember much, but. Just from hearing stories and different things and listening to uh, you know podcasts or uh, shows and stuff, you, you you only sort of you hear of what of what happened and watching things back. But uh, the county just went into complete lockdown, meltdown, you name it. It was just like for such a small county, you know, you it's probably would have seen uh, against Galway the the crowd we had down at it. They're just football mad, football mad. So you can imagine what it was like. Uh, back then in O2 and even after that it was just pandemonium um, and them, them men who played uh, that day they're, they're all legends around the county and always will be um, or just some of us are just lucky enough to you know play under them um, mm. in, in that aspect too and, and learn from them but it's obviously uh, it's the ultimate goal and you know, fair play to them but being the first to do anything like that it's always you know the hardest so uh, they'll always be the first so you always have to respect that as well. <clears throat> yeah, I suppose your dad's influence as well, Jarlett Burns, obviously shares the the same the same name as yourself. Uh, obviously, <laughs> a, a huge sort of influence on on our man. Obviously, so, uh, sort of prior really to 2002, uh, yeah. but he was obviously you know heavily involved back then as well. Like so, I'd imagine his influence was was, was quite huge. Obviously, when you're you're breaking through our man at minor level and and everything else. Absolutely, yeah. Look, Whenever you're a son, maybe of a player who's been successful before you, or one things, and it's sort of hard. You always have that, you know, even even simple as simple as having the same name as him. You know, you're always going to be picked out. 
um, and sort of expectations thrown upon you maybe without you asking for it or looking for it. Um, and I know other players maybe have found that difficult too, but you just try and sort of create your own path and just uh, be yourself and be your own player. Like I'm probably kind of a different player than what he was. And I'm always trying to sort of, you know, be true to myself and try and play to my strengths, maybe not his strengths, but my own strengths. And I think that's all you can do really. Um, but, you know, again, huge impact. Huge, huge impact on me and even still in confidence knowing that you have someone to sort of fall back on and advice and stuff and you know he's been there and done it so you can you always have that to fall back on before games and stuff and it really has helped I have to say <clears throat> but um, it can come in advantage too disadvantages too obviously but um, you can only take it as a positive yeah 100 percent. we are recording this live so if anyone has any questions or anything like that or or anything of that nature we'll certainly read them out i suppose towards the towards the end but yeah you were saying there like i mean there does seem to be a lot of connections really with this with this current team to to that 2002 team like obviously geezer the manager you know you've you've got ushi mcconville's son and Keen mcconville sort of breaking through the ranks rian o'neill's obviously a, a nephew ushi yeah. o'neill as well and obviously yourself so like I'd imagine that weight of expectation like is is quite heavy, but at the same time you do have those lads there to, to really sort of lean your shoulder on if you need to. Absolutely. And uh, Kieran, he's more than more than happy to, to help you with anything, whether that be on the pitch or off the pitch, that's it doesn't matter. Like and you know, he's been there, he's done us, he's won all Ireland, you're gonna listen to what he says, you know. Doesn't matter, you know, he's the captain and stuff, so um, and Ape's always having Kieran Donny there as well, another All Ireland winner. Um, there's not too many All Ireland winners floating about our mass, so um, you know you, you take all you, you can get from them. Um, and even chatting to you know run into other other players on that team, they're you know always more than willing to, to to you know give nuggets of advice. I was played under Aidan O'Rourke and uh, you know in a minor team for our and again brilliant. Uh, the thread sort of our to grab a few players from that team to and implement them as coaches and you know they're underage of our ma um but it does it can have a big effect on you especially sort of growing up and hearing stories about them and just seeing their quality uh, and their coaching and stuff too so um i know steve mcdonald as well was at the under 21 so you can see sort of as you were saying what they're trying to do with it and you know again boys have been there done it you're gonna listen like yeah, hundred percent, and I suppose yeah. we've seen that with with Tyrone as well. Like, and even a lot of the Tyrone lads who are sort of involved in the early two thousand, sort of getting involved. Obviously, you know, even going back to Dublin and you know ninety five, all the rest. A lot of those lads were sort of real, really responsible, really, you know, for for the five in a row team and and everything else. Like, and yeah. I suppose like we were mentioning there about Rian O'Neill and Oshin O'Neill. Obviously, you would have been playing with them at under twenty level, playing with them at minor level as well. Like, I mean, what was it like, sort of making that? breakthrough into minor under 20 and eventually senior and, and seeing you know like the you, you had some amount of quality coming through anyway definitely not sure yeah, talent. yeah funny we, we we've sort of always come through uh you know through the through the ranks all three of us and a few other boys too um and <laughs> we've just sort of come through at the same time yeah and we'd all be quite friendly and stuff obviously being um coming through at the same time but we actually weren't even that successful underage, which I think nearly helped. Um, it's because sometimes to be success at that age can have a hindrance possibly on, on certain people, maybe who aren't able to cope with it. Um, but I think maybe the fact that we weren't as successful as maybe we wanted to be um, drove us on that bit more. Um, and I know there's other good players on that team too that could still yet break through. Like, um, but... There is quite a lot, even the likes of Jason Duffy and all was on that team, and Connor Turbot and different guys they got there too. Sort of all coming in at the same time. There's a good sort of crop of us there around around 23, 24, so um, and 25. So it's uh, it's just about you know turning that into into success. You know we haven't turned that into success yet. We're 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 in the process of trying of trying to do that anyway, and hopefully going about it the right way, but going the right direction. But it definitely helps coming through with them boys obviously you know each other and you know you're not going in alone you know which which always helps it can be quite daunting going into a county senior setup and um, but maybe when you go in with a few lads that you've went through the ranks with it can it can help you know that way is that yeah it's, it's interesting all right you were mentioning there sort of the 
maybe the lack of success uh, on underage level. And even when I was looking back at some of the results and I was looking at some of the players in the team, like obviously yourself, some of the lads we mentioned already, Ross McQuillan as well. Like it's, you were kind of looking at that and thinking, geez, Ulster must have been fairly competitive back then. And I suppose when you think about it, a lot of the lads you would have been coming up against, like the Derry team, for example, yeah. a lot of those players have, have broke into senior level, Tyrone obviously yeah. as well. So, like some of the the teams that were back around then, like it was uh, fairly tough to get out of, I'd imagine. Yeah, there, there's no shortage of good players around around Ulster. Now. That's one thing for sure. Even uh, at schools level, it was the exact same. Uh, Macquarie Cup, it would but been down here, be or up here, be taken as as seriously uh, as the county set up the school football. So uh, you're always playing against them 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 players uh, and sort of. Again, them maybe getting the better of you at that age brought you on a bit uh, as well. And, you know, there is does seem to be maybe that around that period of time, for whatever reason, you know, just a lot of quality players, um, unfortunately for us. Uh, but they just had a good spring of, of, of players and even players coming off the bench. I know I could name you a few from different counties who are you know succeeding at, at senior level now at the county as well. So it's not just us, it's, you know, it's all around, which is... I suppose the credit to the counties that they're able to to bring them on through uh, to be successful. Yeah, what are your memories then of being uh, called up to the senior team? Yeah, <laughs> quite surreal, quite surreal to be honest. Um, it sort of took me by surprise to be honest. Um, and uh, once you, you go in, you're you nearly starstruck looking at everyone uh, around you. Um, I was quite happy to sort of come in maybe around 20, 21 sort of age because I felt then I was I was ready to sort of maybe make an impact. Um, and I think when you get in initially, you sort of need to, to make an impact straight away or you could get you know bumped to the back of the queue fairly handy. Um, so I was happy that I was able to sort of get in and again, I was constantly asking questions and off the senior buys and, you know, what do I need to do or... What do we need to get better at? Different things I got there, and again, they're more than willing to help. Um, that's the one bit of advice I give to anyone: is just be curious, be curious to get better, and, and ask players, senior players, um, how to get better and what they think you could work on. And different things I got there, and I was lucky enough my first year in, I was sort of straight into the, after a lot of hard work in the preseason, maybe and a success at uh, St Mary's with the Sigerson or getting to a final and stuff. I was able to. They get starting that summer, and the back end of the league, uh, and had a had a decent first season. So, um, getting getting the call through the way was first of all surreal, but then sort of very quickly turned into right. You know, let's get turned in here and you know be ready to make an impact when I get in. Yeah, what's it like playing under Kieran McGinney? Obviously, we were mentioning him a bit earlier as well. Like, I mean, he seems tough as nails. Anyway, anytime like you, you're watching him on the on the sideline or anything like that, I'm not too sure if I've ever seen him smile or or anything <laughs> of that nature. Like, but at the same time, like as you mentioned, like All Ireland winner in in 2002, mm-hmm. probably one of the most famous names that that came out of Armagh football, and he didn't do a half bad job at Kildare either. And you've seen yeah. what Armagh you know, Division 3 team when he took over. So what's it been like sort of uh, playing under him? Oh, I, I honestly, I can't speak highly of him. Uh, I think if you ask any of the, the players in the current setup or even previous players, the, most of them would say the same. Um, just, you name it, preparation, um, you know, leaves no stone unturned. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the stuff he has doing. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, um, and the... You know how far he's brought this team so far is it's it's all down to him and a few people around him as well, obviously. Um, but he's just brilliant. Yeah, obviously I don't want to go into too much detail about it, but um, again, it's for him. It's not only just on the pitch. You know, he he actually cares off the pitch what you're doing with yourself and how he can help. And I know fellas opening up different businesses. And, businesses and stuff and he, he's more than willing to, to help or give advice or get you know give contacts or give numbers and stuff he uh it's a 24 hour sort of thing with him um and again he is just addicted to, to getting better uh, and that just you know rubs off in the players um and it's uh yeah we're just glad that he stays still with us because i know uh, any other county would have him in a heartbeat so we're just glad he's he's sticking around 
Yeah, like, and it's been some amount of progress <clears> you've <throat> made as well since 2019, as we said, like coming from coming well, Division Three 2018, but obviously <clears> making <throat> your way up from from Division Two all the way up to Division One, now solidifying yourself in there as well and beating sides like Dublin and Tyrone. So, I mean, it has been some amount of progress over the last few seasons for our math football. Yeah, I know absolutely. There's no point saying there hasn't been. Uh, we're not satisfied just yet, but you know we're going the right direction. Um, obviously, with a few good, a few good wins in the league and in, in the championship, but ultimately didn't didn't get the job done and didn't win the thing. That's the ultimate goal. But you know, there's definitely been progress. We can see that in our play. Uh, probably a better understanding of of each other and even what we're doing as well. Um, and you know, we're just trying to keep it keep it going in the right direction you know we don't want to go back down uh to old habits or different things i got there i want to keep innovating and keep improving um and you know there's a lot of good teams you know there's no it's it's tough mm. it's tough to do um and there's, there's teams getting better as well so you know if you're not if you're not continuing to improve you, you'll soon fall behind um but we're just delighted that we can have the opportunity again to, to get in division one and play the top teams obviously in the country uh, again which can only be only do good for you um, and sort of see where it takes us then into the into the championship see where it can, where it can go yeah Rory had a comment here what was it like when you beat Dublin <clears throat> at that league game which was what I was going to ask you next funnily enough like it was obviously a win that very much set the tone for, for the season I know Dublin probably didn't have the best year in the end and, and went on to get relegated yeah. but like yeah. it was some performance from yourselves and you know like i don't even think he's a full tilt either and in, in that one like yeah it was it was a funny old night a lot it was a lot of our first time even playing crow park mm. uh so it was all real new to us it was the first time playing dublin and um, so we were just all eager and you know i know for myself like i know and i know other boys too were just so excited to play you know and so which some, sometimes can just lead to a performance like that where you're just you know there's no real nerves you're just excited to get out on the pitch and then play a bit of football um and maybe we just got them on the hop in the night but we sort of played well and uh, maybe we surprised them a bit um that night with maybe some of our play and stuff uh but it all just sort of clicked for us and we did train hard with the pre-season and stuff and we're really targeting that first game against them um, the train set our stall out early uh, and it wasn't even really about for us getting a win it was more about getting a performance for us and um, if you can perform well that's all you're in control of but for t t to go right first that night was it gave us great confidence going in for the rest of the league I have to say uh, because you know very quickly if you get beat in your first couple of games you know it, it, it can be tough to, to lift it again um, so getting that first first win under your belt and especially against you know Dublin in Crow Park gave us great confidence going forward yeah because I remember even watching the game unfortunately as, as a Dublin fan but <laughs> yeah. I remember like watching it with a few mates and even we were saying at the time like it nearly felt like almost like a coming out party for our man in some ways because I think 2020 and 2021 there was obviously no back door so you know we didn't really get to see a lot of our man the mm -hmm. championship or anything of that nature obviously there was a condensed league as well and you obviously go on to be Tyrone a week later so it kind of did feel like it was it, it was nearly the time where I suppose as you said obviously you haven't won anything serious yet but at the same time he's arrived at the top table beating the big teams anyway yeah no that's it that's it and again like whenever you are maybe beating them teams as well it sort of puts it maybe at a target in your back as well for for teams coming in to play you and stuff so like we that was sort of a, a change of mindset maybe for us was we, we were always sort of you know looking you know, as, as underdogs and maybe then going into some of the games as, as favorites it was sort of slightly maybe alien to us and maybe we struggled to cope with it at times um but you know it's it's a great competition the national league i, I love it i know other players love it as well uh the sort of week in week out uh of playing you know the best teams all around the country was great um and again it can only bring you on and we're you know delighted that we're still in it maybe we could have got sneaked or snuck a league final um towards the end of it to get another runner run out in crow park but um we didn't get there we we just fell short but you know it's it's it is what it is I suppose you just have to get on with it
Yeah, and then I suppose looking back on on the championship this year, I mean, it didn't start the best against Donegal, but I suppose he more than more than got revenge against them and, and obviously beat Tyrone as well. And I suppose from speaking to some RMA fans in the past, I think any year where you beat Tyrone is usually a good one anyway, especially for the supporters and everything else. And yeah, I'd imagine it was it was tough enough watching them probably win the All Ireland last year. So to knock them out, I'd imagine was was fairly sweet. Yeah, no, it was definitely was. Now I'm sure they'd say the same if they, if they were to put us out as well. It's just sort of again, especially sort of uh, the generation we were in. We were we grew up, we grew up watching the Naughties and them players play, uh, playing them in great games and in Crow Park. Sort of there was always that rivalry that you're always looking at. Um, and anytime you're playing Tyrone, you're sort of a bit more of a pep in your step. You can sort of tell in training. You know, there's there's by sort of maybe. Given a bit more, so uh, it was definitely uh, then when the Ireland gave us, I know it gave other other boys belief uh, that maybe you know you're not as far off as you think. Um, and fair play to them, they were like I would know a lot of them through through university. I was laid for them, um, because I know the work they put in, um, and they're well deserved of it. So for us then to to beat them the following year was was just obviously a sweet one, but um, they're obviously weren't maybe their best or but maybe. <clears throat> listen from players and stuff and it just maybe didn't happen for them last year for whatever reason or another and I know they'll be they'll be back hungrier than ever this year but um it was great and then obviously to, to beat Donegal as well we we felt sort of we did feel pressure going into that game after them giving us a bit of a trimming uh the first day uh, and we felt pressure to to really put that right we you know we couldn't let them we couldn't let them beat us again so um, we needed to come out of the blocks quick, and thankfully we did with the goal. Um, and they're they're a good team. They came back at us in fairness to them, but thankfully we were able to sort of pull away in the second half and and get that much needed win that we needed to get over them because they just had our number there for for a few years. So it was it was a big win in a lot of ways for us that that second done the game. Yeah, and then I suppose you have the the Galway game then, which was a a bit of a fairly <laughs> mental game, anyways. Like. I mean, <laughs> you don't even know where to start with it. Like, I suppose, first of all, like, what was it like to, to play in a game like that? I mean, you know, I think in the past, any time I've been speaking to people, maybe on holidays or anything like that, and you sort of, you go to show them a game of Gaelic football and it always go back to Dublin Kerry 2013. But obviously yeah. now in the Armagh Galway game, you know, I think definitely the, the game of the decade so far anyways. I mean, what was it like to, to play in that game? Uh, chaotic would be... It would be the only word I could use to describe it. Uh, it was just mental. I don't know how you would how you would even describe it, but it was uh, it was first of all, you know, great to play in. You know, the, it was the first time we played. You know, in almost a full house uh, in Crow Park. A lot of us as well. So again, all new to us. Um, sort of maybe similar to them. The, <clears throat> they come out of the blocks quick with with different things and and sort of threw stuff at us that we didn't expect them to throw at us and you know they're they're a great side we threw everything at them you know and uh, they dealt with it well and obviously they sort of pulled away towards the end and then we got a few goals at the end then too it just was, it was the emotions were were high low and then high again it was it was crazy like and. Obviously, ending in penalties maybe didn't didn't do it justice. The game maybe justice that what it deserved, but um, that's we know that was that's the reality. We knew that's that's the way it was gonna go. Um, we had been practicing actually practicing penalties the whole way up throughout uh, the championship, so you know we prepared for it. So it was just unfortunate that we were put out that way. But it's a bit of a it's a hard way to go out. To be honest with you, you know it's sort of. Doesn't feel good, but uh, you know they went on obviously and, and got to a final, um, and could have won it, but you know didn't in the end. But yeah, the game was just just crazy. You know, there's not much I can remember from it to be honest. It was just that chaotic, and not, not much going on in it, all over the place. But I'm sure it was great for the for the neutral to watch. Yeah, it definitely was like, and I suppose you mentioned the the penalties there, and I think Porrick Joyce, I remember, was saying after I even. You know, like it's it's probably not the the right way to decide a Gaelic football match, especially a game of of that magnitude. And 
I suppose that's the only maybe negative of the split season is the fact that a lot of these games do have yeah. to be decided on penalties. Other than I think I think provincial finals and all autumn finals, I don't think mm-hmm. are, are going to penalties, yeah. but quarterfinals, semi-finals potentially going to, to penalties. So I suppose great if you win, but obviously a bit of a disaster if you lose. Yeah, that's it. It's it's just the reality of it. You know, it's not a nice way to go out. Um, yeah, it's it's. You know, you're sort of going back to the drawing board and thinking, right, we work, we improve, and what went wrong for us when you weren't really sort of beaten in the football aspect of it, you were put out in the penalties, like do you work on your penalties, right? You know, but it, it's just reality. Like we knew that's the way it was going into the game. You know, we're not you know, there's no point making excuses for it. You know, they just had taken the the good penalty takers in the furnace, and it was just a lottery at that stage. You know, it was. Just, you know, they got the bit of luck that they needed and, you know, they, they took it. And again, I'm sure, you know, other people from, from other point of views will say, no, it was brilliant. It was drama. It was this, it was that. I know I'm sad for love, you know, watching penalties in the soccer or whatever, but, um, you know, what do you do? That's just the way it is. There's no point, no point crying about it. Yeah, and in terms of the game itself, I mean, you were six points down in the 72nd minute. Like, I mean, at that point, like, what's what's running through your head? Like, I mean, you obviously get those two late goals and, like, I, I nearly felt like the roof was going to come off. I'm not too sure I've heard Crow Park that loud in, in God knows how long, to be honest. Like, so, I mean, like, Jesus, like, what, what was going through your head in, in that kind of brief moment? Because, like, obviously you were yeah. down to 14 men as well. Like, not many teams would have it in them to, to come back and even get it to extra time. Yeah, I think I just... It sort of took the goal, a goal like that, to, to sort of spark us back in life. We were maybe a bit def- we were deflated, you know, after the right card. It was tough because you were sort of, you, were, you know, there was a point in it and uh, you were down to 40 men. You could feel it in the legs and stuff and it was hard, harder maybe to get them scores you were getting before that. Um, and sort of once we got the goal and as you say, the sort of the crowd, you know, got into it, it just re- completely re-energised you and you could sort of feel hold on a second here the momentum is just sort of shifting um mm. and the sort of you could sort of look around and you know you could see the belief in some in the boys eyes and stuff there you know we could sort of feel that we could do something to get back into it um and you know thankfully we did um now there's still a lot to be played after that obviously an extra time and stuff uh, and <laughs> You know, they had their, had their own wee mini comeback as well, I suppose, in extra time. They could, they, they got a goal there towards the end and maybe we could have scored a point at the very end to win it. But um, I think sort of the way that game was going, it was always going to end. It was always going to end in a draw uh, after extra time as well, I thought. Yeah, and that Ryan O'Neill point right at the end as well. I mean, different, different gravy altogether. Oh, ridiculous. You know, he... I just knew he was gonna. I just knew he was gonna kick it. If you know him, uh, you know he wouldn't. He wouldn't lack in confidence, and that you need a man like that in your team. Uh, that sort of, you know, don't oh, leave it to me. I, I'm gonna kick this over, uh, and just thankfully, you know, he did. And in fairness to him, uh, you know, he, he kicked it with maybe twenty yards to spare. Like he, he's a great striker of the ball, so you know, it just shows that he has that in him to to kick. You know, them, them big kicks. I suppose like his. Like his uncle Ashin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it was a, it, it was an unbelievable kick, and I suppose then you obviously had, you know, the the Hawkeye incident as well, and obviously the the brawl of full time. I mean, like what was it like, sort of? I suppose seeing it all kick off. Like, I mean, you you see nearly Park Joyce getting involved at one stage. Like it was kind of it's kind of mm-hmm. mad watching on the TV. So what were you sort of? I don't even I can't even remember. Maybe you were in in the yeah. middle of it as well. <laughs> yeah, no noise, breaking by his up, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, no, it's like it was, it was just emotions were high, maybe in both teams. We were in a high, they were sort of maybe in shock. Uh, just mm-hmm. what, what happened, and uh, maybe it was, it was an, an isolated incident that started it off. And then naturally, you know, everyone was sort of going into that, that tunnel on the Cusick side, anyway. Mm-hmm. So they all naturally sort of gravitated towards us. Um, and it sort of turned into something that it didn't need to turn into. But again, when emotions are high, it's hard. You know what's what you, you don't know what's going through people's minds. Like it's hard to sort of put yourselves in the put yourself in their shoes. But 
you know, it's just the reality of it. That's what, that's what happened. And, you know, it's something, you know, we need, every team can, can try and get out of the game, like including us. So, we're, you know, I'm sure it'll be a, you know, a talking point for us, you know, and trying to trying to maybe cut out that silly stuff, you know, from us all. But uh, again, when emotions are high, you know, that's just that stuff can can tend to happen when you're all going into the one sort of spot. So I don't even know how you would change it, but it was just unfortunate the way the way it happened. We were all sort of went in at the same time. Maybe if one of us had, had stayed out, possibly before the other one in, I'm sure it wouldn't have happened. But it was just sort of wrong place, wrong time, sort of type type stuff like. Yeah, maybe maybe it's because it was full time as well, and obviously you knew there was there was extra time. Like I think usually with half time, you know, you might let the one team go and then the other team would follow. Maybe just with the fact that it was full time, I suppose maybe there just wasn't a preparation probably in plan for for something like that. And I suppose as you said there, like when tensions are running high, you know, like I suppose sometimes it only takes one one person really to to start things off, and then I suppose yeah. it can it can all kind of be let loose after that. Absolutely, yeah, spot on. Yeah, that's just I echo what you said. Yeah, exactly. It just again, you don't know what's going through by his mind. You know, I know you're sort of going from just we're out here to wow, it's it's extra time. So sort of, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're on a high, you're, you're you're pumped and stuff. And again, as you said, usually at full time, there's a winner or a loser, and that's just it. But the fact maybe there's extra time, there was just maybe. I don't know what boys trying to get themselves pumped or something. I'm not sure, but yeah, mm. yeah, and and obviously as we've seen, with all, like they went on to the All Ireland final and obviously beat Derry in the semi finals. Like, although at the time I'm sure it was a big, big negative, obviously losing on on penalties to Armagh, but at the same time you've seen how close Galway pushed mm. Kerry in that final as well. Yeah. So probably does give you a bit of confidence at the same time that look, you know. Maybe if yourselves were in the final, who knows? Maybe you, you would have closed it out. It's hard to know, but at the same time, you're, you're certainly not a million miles away, anyways. No, again, that's it. We know, you know, there's a lot of counties uh, close to it, you know, and sometimes you just need a wee bit of luck on your side to, to, to get through it. Uh, and, you know, go with, <laughs> I thought they were brilliant in that final. Uh, maybe quite unlucky not to. Not to pull through, maybe the last five ten minutes, Kerry sort of pulled away. Uh, maybe that bit of experience sort of helped them. Uh, but you know, again, it does it just you're not far away. You just have to sort of keep pushing, and you can't get carried away, or you can't sort of look back and last. You just have to keep sort of looking forward and see how you can improve and stuff, and um, try not to sort of you know dwell on things. You just have to try and maybe look at where we can improve on and. You know where we fell short last year, how we fell short, and different things we got there. So, uh, yeah, but we know, you know, as just like a lot of other teams uh, around the country, that it's you know it's not far away for a lot of teams. There. Yeah, I'd imagine you're excited for the twenty twenty three championship to to come around. Anyway, I mean, starting what well, mid mid January, so like obviously into county train and probably be back soon enough as well. So I'd imagine for yourself anyway, sort of. Good to good to have the the inter county season back soon. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, something you obviously you look forward to. So it's it's great. Uh, obviously, getting your time off, but once you get to you get a, a lack of weeks, you sort of are mad to, to get back into it and get back in with the team and get back training and stuff. Uh, so uh, it's uh, something we're definitely looking forward to getting back into and getting back into the swing of things and different matches and stuff. So. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to that though. absolutely yeah my, my camera's had a, a conniption here for some reason I, don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why but I, th- I think you can still hear me anyway so yeah. we'll, de- we'll, we'll definitely try and, uh, and sort that in a minute but um, I'd imagine anyway like winning Ulster is probably the the main aim really like for yourselves like I'm sure you've probably heard of the stat of, of every team getting to a, an Ulster final since he's last won it so yeah. I can imagine that's the the big focus anyway for yourselves and I know for supporters it certainly is anyway yeah yeah so like I suppose when we when we get Ulster Championship kicks in the gear we'll uh, you know you just again you take every game as it comes but as a long term goal it's definitely you know uh you know, something we have our eye on to try and well, first of all even just do our best to get to a final 
Um, it's you know not easy up in Ulster. <laughs> There's a lot of good teams, um, as you can see. But it's uh, again, I think we we definitely have the players and uh, the the team to capable of maybe getting to the final if we with a bit of luck and a few good performances. Um, but again, it's it's easier said than done. There's a lot of good teams and that are just as good as you. So it's um, again. It's sort of it's always down to the day for who who comes up and who performs the best. So um, again, for a long term goal, yeah, we'll be we'll be keeping our eye on it. But I suppose we'll not be looking at it at it for for a wee while yet. Anyway, hundred percent. Yeah, like many young players coming through at the minute. Obviously, we've seen. I suppose Keane McConville. Obviously, he's kind of been in around the Armagh panel. We. We obviously yeah. seen for for Cross McGlenn his his performance the other week. So could there be many yeah. young players sort of coming through Armagh in next season or potentially beyond? Uh, I'm sure there is. Yeah, uh, there's always good young footballers coming through in Armagh. Definitely. Um, you know, you you mightn't see them maybe for a few years, or they could come straight in and, and make an impact. It's hard to know. Um, only they know that. Uh, what you know, what they will put in, but. Um, I'm sure there there'll be trials. There'll be something maybe in, in a few months' time, or uh, be few boys brought in uh, to see what the sort they're made of, and if they can sort of buy into what we're doing or what we're trying to do. Yeah, uh, there's no reason why they can't make an impact. Um, probably off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone. Um, but I'm sure there's some boys coming through that are maybe pushing hard, especially maybe with you know the progress we're making. Maybe it's sort of. Boys are sort of pushing on now to really try and try and make that senior panel to sort of be part of it. But um, I'm sure in the next couple of months, I you know, when as they come in, I'll, I'll not be long seeing, and hopefully they do push on for our sake. I suppose we'll just run through some questions here just from the live chat. So I suppose Jerry says here, what. Areas is Armagh going to improve in to, to progress next year? So, uh, I suppose maybe more of a question for, for for Geezer himself. But in terms of yourself, like what what kind of areas do you think you'll be looking to improve next season? Yeah, I suppose it's all, all all areas. Uh, we can improve in all areas, definitely. You know, from 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 goalkeeper from goalkeeper up, um, we're trying to get better everywhere. Um, whether that be you know, kickouts or one on one defending or whatever. It's sort of something maybe we'll recap on ourselves as a team and um, we get back together and stuff about things, you know, that maybe we fell short of last year. But uh, yeah, as you said, maybe one for, for Geezer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Richard says here, uh, where do you see yourself as your best position on the field? Wing back, midfield, half forward, full forward. So I suppose, yeah, what, what position would you would you find yourself best in? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've been asked that lots, but uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe wing back at the minute uh, seems to be sort of um, working for me. Maybe uh, so you're sort of facing the play a lot more at wing back. Maybe you're freed up a bit more too to to try and get forward as well. You're not maybe getting tagged as much as you would be maybe if you're playing up the field in midfield or in the half forward lane or the full forward lane. So that freedom can be nice. Um, obviously as well, but um, again, I'll put that there where I'm, where I'm told. I'm not not too picky about it, but uh, I suppose at the minute the way it sort of modern day is midfield, it's maybe the high catching isn't a big of a big of a thing uh, now with the with short kickouts and stuff. So um, you know, it's it's sort of all the same. That middle eight, you know, they're all doing sort of the same job anyway. So it's not not much of a difference really. Yeah, Jerry also says here, which side in Ulster does Armagh have their eye on next season? Uh, a lot of teams, again, as you said, there's a lot of good teams in uh, in Ulster. So, uh, again, we'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, I suppose Ulster is very competitive anyway. Like It's a bit of a, a minefield, really, at times. Like We were speaking about the you know underage and, and everything else, but senior level, like... You know, you had Cavan what in twenty nineteen, Derry last year, Tyrone in between, as you've mentioned before, Donegal, very, very good side. So like Ulster is it's such a minefield really to get out yeah. of it. Absolutely, yeah. Like and even 
some of maybe so called lesser teams too are, are improving as well. I know like the likes of Antrim and Fermanagh are, are constantly improving and, and progressing. So it's you know, you, you can't take anyone lightly. Ulster, like it's for whatever reason, you know, anyone can it seems anyone can beat anyone, uh, which maybe makes that's why it's such a you know, an interesting championship to watch for the neutral as well. Um and but again you know, that's, that's what it's about, I suppose. That's the type of game he's going to be playing in, uh, especially early on in the championship. It can, it can do you a lot of good. Yeah, and I suppose, last but not least, we have Richard here who says, what do you think of the forward mark, keeper, go? I suppose a lot of talk, really, about the mark and, and everything else. What's your opinion on it? Uh, yeah, it, I don't mind it. I don't love it either. I don't have much of an opinion on it, to, to be honest with you. Um I think it does. It has the sort of the right idea. Uh, maybe a, a wee tweak uh, to the rule would would do it the world of good. Um, but I like you know it encourages to to kick the ball more and kick kick it forward long, uh, which is what everyone wants to see. I suppose at different times instead of it sort of varies the game up a lot more rather than you know all running um, or all kicking. That sort of the fact you can do a bit of both with the mark is good. But maybe a wee tweak to it uh, wouldn't do it any harm. So it's maybe. Gives uh gives the defender maybe a bit more leeway. It's not maybe as sort of as maybe AF alley if you want to put it that way. Whereas there's a lot of marks in, inside the forward line. Absolutely. Well, look, Charlie, I, I very much appreciate you you jumping on. Apologies for my camera just absolutely failing. I'm gonna have to have a look at that <laughs> after this. But, um, but but yeah, no, top man, much appreciated uh, for for you coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah,